Hey guys, Hardly Brief Dan here with another episode of the Unity Make an RPG series. Today, or in this video, we're going to be working on the ability system. Uh, the last video was a short introduction on what we're going to be doing over the next several videos. Today, we're going to start working on that. Uh, we're going to work on the base ability class. We're going to talk about a few things that we want to add for it. Um, so let's just get ahead and jump right into it. First thing I'm going to do is in our scripts folder, in our project folder, I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call it ability system here. Like that. Uh, in the ability system, we're going to go ahead and add a C sharp script and I'm going to call this ability. And then I'm going to do one more and create one more script and we're going to call it ability behavior. And the first script that we're going to, I just created this because we're going to need to access it. But the first thing, actually, we're going to call it behaviors. Excuse me. But the first thing that we're going to work on is the ability. So let's go ahead and load that in here. We're going to get an error. So I'm going to open up the behaviors uh, script and make sure it's properly named. Uh, so all they did there, let me zoom in a little bit. I added an S on the end of it because I want ability behaviors. But anyways, we're in the ability class right now. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the mono behavior because we're not going to be using that inheritance right now. Uh, so that means we can go ahead and get rid of the start method and the update method. And we're just going to talk about and add some things that we know that our base ability class has. What does every ability have? That's the thing you need to think about when you're creating a class or an object right now. Uh, and especially when you're going to be using inheritance. You know that every ability is going to have a few things. We know it's going to have a private string name. We know that we're also going to have a private string of descri a description because we want, you know, like I said before, we're going to be creating a fireball. So we know the fireball has a name fireball and it's going to have some sort of description that will probably describe some of the behaviors that it has. Uh, and one way you can, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. But one way you can uh, really spice up your descriptions if you don't want to write them all, you could actually have a way that your description is created based on the types of behaviors it has. But uh, we can talk about that when we get into ability behaviors some more. So anyways, we have a name and we have a description. The next thing we, all, we know is we're going to have an image for our, you know, for our uh, ability. We're going to have some sort of an icon. Uh, and so that's going to be a sprite and we'll just call it icon. And then we're going to have a list and two booleans, at least for now. So in order to use a list, we need to come up here and add a library. And it's in system, so we're going to be using system dot collections dot generic and that's going to give us access to the list type so we're going to create a, create a private list and it's going to be of type ability behaviors right so that's the class that we just created but we haven't really done much with uh, and we'll call this behaviors like that um, and then like I said we're going to create two boolean values so let's do that now we'll create a private bool and this will be requires target so maybe our ability requires a target, um, like a charge ability. Um, <clears throat> usually if you're going to be charging something, it might require a target. Uh, but maybe not. Maybe you can just charge wherever you want. Um, then we're going to have a private bool cam cast on self. So you might be able to cast this on yourself. Uh, and then the last thing we'll do is provide a integer, which will be a cooldown timer. Uh, cooldown amount and this let's say this is gonna be in seconds so we remember um, and th that's a basically it uh, this is what our uh, base ability is gonna have for now we might need to add more or take away things depending on what we get you know later down the road um, we know that we want to probably have a particle effect for every uh, spell so like that's casted on the person so actually we'll go ahead and add that now we'll do a private private um, particle effect um, and you know what we'll do we'll create a game object so it's just gonna be a prefab and we'll call this particle effect okay and so this needs to be uh, assigned when we create the ability uh, and you could reuse particle effects and stuff so maybe like when you swing you just have this swooping motion it really depends uh, and we could turn this, we, we don't have to use, we can make this so we don't have to use this particle effect. Maybe the behavior itself has a particle effect. Uh, but this is good for now. So now what we need to do is set up a couple constructors that are going to you know, be how we make the ability. One way we can do this is by doing a public uh, ability. 
I'm probably going to make a few of these because maybe we have ability that only doesn't use all these things, right? So what we can do is we know every ability we make is going to take a name. So we'll call it uh, a name. Uh, we're going to take a string description, so we'll call it a description. We're going to take an icon, so we'll do sprite um, and a icon. And then <clears throat> let's say um, we'll take a list of behaviors. Like that. And this will be the first one. Oh, we want to cool down. Uh, well, no. So this is one constructor, constructor, excuse me, and we're going to make several of these so that they can overload. So like if you don't, if you don't, if you have more information than this, then we'll do that. Uh, but we want the basic one. So every basic, every basic ability that you create uh, requires a name, an icon, a behavior, and a type of some type of description. Uh, and actually, we're going to get rid of the description because I like the idea of creating a description based on the behaviors. So really. We only need a name, an icon, and a behavior to really create our uh, base ability. Uh, and so now in this constructor, we're going to assign the values, our private variables, to what we the arguments that we pass in. So a name is equal to a name. Icon is going to be equal to a icon. And then we'll do behaviors. And we'll just set that equal to a new list. Just to be sure that the object exists, and then we'll set it to uh, equal to a behaviors, like that. Uh, this is not necessary, I'm pretty sure, but we'll just do it just in case. Uh, so now you might be asking, well, none of these are determined. You know, how do we add these? Well, uh, when we use, if we create ability and we call this constructor to make it, this means it doesn't have a particle effect. It doesn't have a cooldown yet, but we can add it. We can say the default cooldown uh, will be equal to zero. So this means it's an instant cast if we can do this. Um, we can say requires target is false. And uh, let's see, cat can cast on self, excuse me, will be false. And then we'll create a description. And for now, uh, we'll just say default. But what we'll do later is create a description based on the behaviors. And so we'll have to work on a method. And let's just make a note of that. Let's say work on method later to create um, description based on behaviors. That's something that we'll do. It'd be a lot of fun. We can add some uh, cool flavor text and stuff later on. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, the particle effect will, we won't be using with this constructor, but let's say we want to have one. So we're going to create another constructor. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to hit control V to paste it. And <clears throat> now we're going to add a few other things. Let's say we already have a description that we want to add here. So we'll put that in there. Uh, we need to add a string and A. So string A description. We have the icon that we want. We have the list of behaviors. Let's say we know we want to require a target. So we'll say, uh, well, we want, to, we want to be able to specify. So we'll say bool require target. And uh, let's say we want to specify cooldown and it has a particle effect let's put an A in front of here so we'll keep it consistent it doesn't really matter um, but we'll just keep it consistent like I said uh, so basically what we're doing here is or what I'm trying to do is demonstrate that you can create several you can create hundreds of constructors if you want with all the different variations of how you want to create something. And what this will really come in handy is if you have an ability cra crafting system within the game, so maybe your character, your players can create an ability, this might become in handy. Uh, since we're going to be creating an editor, we're probably only, only going to be using a couple of these, and we'll definitely fine tune it. I just wanted to go ahead and show you that you can create several uh, if you did not know that. So you can create several, several of these, and when you go to create a new ability, you'll be able to choose which one you want. Uh, you know, So if you have a description, in a behavior icon name, then you have to use this one. You have to add the other things that are required. Um, so I again, I just wanted to show you that. Let, let's go ahead and adjust this. So now that we're required, we can pass in a required target. We'll use this variable here. Can just double click and Control C to copy it, and we'll paste it on requires target. I'm gonna get same thing with the cooldown here. 
And we have a description, so let's do that. And uh, it looks like it's about it. So, oh, that should be false. I copied the wrong thing for cooldown. Replace the zero. There we go. Uh, and we need to do the sprite. So here we'll go ahead, or the particle effect. So we'll do particle effect uh, is equal to particle, what is it called? It's pretty long. A particle E. Like that. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and uh, add a couple public accessor, uh, accessors, you know, a getter basically to get info, get the information out of these private variables. Uh, outside of our constructor, we never want to be able to change the name and stuff. We don't want to do that. We might want to change the icon so we can uh, make that add a get and set for that. Uh, not even though, we're not really going to change this information. Uh, but we need a way to access it. So what we're going to do is create a whole bunch of public getters uh, for it. Um, so we'll just do a public string, and this is going to be ability name. Let's make it a little bit more descriptive since this is what we're going to be getting. Uh, and so we'll say get uh, return name. Pretty simple. I'm just going to hold control and shift and use my, or excuse me, hold control and use my arrow keys, shift and hold my arrow keys to get this uh, context. So that's shift and the arrow keys to highlight everything. And then control V to paste. And I'm going to do that a couple times. So we have a couple to work with here. Uh, so instead of a billion name here, we want description, so that we can, you know, add a, icon, a, a tool tip later or something to get the description of the ability. Uh, we want to do, do the icon, which is going to take a sprite instead of a string. So let's go ahead and change that. We'll call this ability uh, icon, and we'll change that to return icon. <clears throat> the reason why we're making these public getters and setters is because it's good practice not to um, actually change the private variables. You want to create you want to create things private and only make them public when absolutely necessary. So we're creating a method uh, which is a getter that returns the name for us. So it might seem tedious to do all this, but it's it's a better coding practice to do it that way. So now we're going to go ahead and um, return requires target. Actually, we're not going to be looking at returns require target or cast on self. Uh, we'll get the cooldown. That'll be a good one. So let's do, um, we've done the icon. We'll do int ability. And again, we'll probably add some or take away some based on our needs here. Uh, I haven't coded any of this before, so this is on the fly. Um, so we'll have our cooldown here. Let me just copy that, make sure we spell it all the same. Uh, and that's looking pretty good for now. We will make a let's make a private let's make a getter and setter for or a getter for our behaviors just in case. Uh, so we'll do a public void. Oh, excuse me. The list ability behaviors and we'll say ability behaviors. And we'll do a get again return and we're going to return behaviors. Pretty simple. Um, and then w after we have all that done, we're going to add a public class or excuse me a method down here uh, and this is going to be called, called use use ability and this is what we're going to be calling so we want one basic method that when we use our ability we call this so this is where a lot of the logic is going to come in where we're going to determine how we launch our ability okay uh, but with having said that uh, we're going to leave the video here uh, and when we pick up in the next video, we're going to start looking at using inheritance to create our spell and melee uh, <clears throat> ability classes. And we'll start working on our ability behavior class. So I'll talk to you guys next time.